So since Digital Foundry still hasn't made a full video about DLDSR, I was pretty excited when earlier this week Nvidia updated the driver and I wanted to do a little bit of a testing of my own to see what it really is all about and hopefully share those findings to hold you on and maybe give you a little bit of an idea of what to expect because whenever Digital Foundry finally decides to make the complete package on this topic, I'm just gonna leave it linked in the description because, I don't know, let's be honest, who are the real experts here? I was just a curious guy that wanted to find some answers and they have years and years of experience. So let's start from the beginning. Deep Learning Dynamic Super Resolution, or DLDSR for short, basically is an updated version of what we've already had for years with just normal DSR, which meant Dynamic Super Resolution. It's a feature where it's intended for you to super sample your game in order to get better image quality in an exchange for actual performance. And this updated version is supposed to give you better quality for lower performance impact. You can use DLDSR in two different modes, 1.78 times your monitor's resolution and 2.25 times. And this second mode, Nvidia says that it's as good of an image as the previous DSR version was at four times. And that's pretty huge. You should also keep two things in mind. Number one, this is an exclusive feature to RTX 2000 and 3000 series because it needs the tensor cores in order to accelerate the deep learning process. And number two, it's very important to keep in mind what your monitor's actual resolution is because the DSR values scale with that in mind. So four times DSR in a 1080p monitor, it's effectively 4K, but if you have a 4K monitor, four times that it's 8K. And unless you have a, just a stupid GPU from another planet, you will be hard found to run any game at 8K with anywhere near 60 FPS. So with all that said, you might be wondering, I mean, which games are good to try with the LDSR, which games are not. And as far as I'm concerned, there are three different types of games where you can try to use the LDSR in order to get the best possible image. Number one are older games or games that you can run with a lot of performance headroom. So your GPU is just chilling at 50% and you're still getting enough FPS for everything that you want. In games like this, you can try to use it in order to get that extra cherry on top and older games are just prime candidates for this. Number two, you have games that have bad anti-aliasing implementation. So older games or even more recent games like Forza Horizon 5, for example, they have very limited AA options. So you either have FXAA, which is very blurry or just MSAA or SMAA, different types of AA that worked bad in their time and they work bad now and raising your internal resolution can sometimes minimize a lot of these artifacts that come with just aliasing in general so those are also a good option and number three are games that are more recent and come with DLSS built in you can use DLDSR in order to raise your internal resolution and then use DLSS on top of it because yes you can use both of them at the same time and in a lot of scenarios particularly in control that we are going to see a little later on in the video, it's a great way to get that extra little bit of internal resolution and make the LSS really, really shine. All the testing that I did was done on an RTX 3090 and a 5900X. And to be honest, that's pretty much best case scenario when it comes to this tech, because it really is only useful if you have performance to spare. If your GPU is already hitting 99% and you're still struggling for FPS, this is no DLSS magic. This is just a way to get better graphics in exchange for GPU usage. Now let's get onto some examples and I'll, I'll just be here with my iPad and my notes and I'll read them off to you along the examples that I recorded to best try to showcase what the LDSR really can do. Let's kick this off with Borderlands 2 and it's a really great example where higher resolution has minimal impact on performance since the GPU maxed out at around 50% at 1440p. So the Hexer Headroom can be used with the 2.25 times DLDSR option, resulting in a much clearer image and a best case scenario for this tech. I was able to retain very similar performance, but with substantially clearer and less aliased image, 
which looks better even without zooming in at all, but if you do zoom in, it's a much, much, much more apparent improvement. However, when changing the resolution in-game, it showed me something that I found in a lot of games. The game was locked at 60Hz for whatever reason, and to fix that, you have to change your desktop resolution before entering the game. These sorts of issues were hit or miss with older games, and that makes DLDSR far from a plug-and-play solution for most people. Portal 2 was next on the list, and it's a decent example. Very low GPU usage, even with 8x MSAA, and you see a noticeable improvement to the overall sharpness and detail in the image, but given the style of the game and the graphics in general, it really isn't all that noticeable once the game is in motion. This time around, it worked pretty well without having to mess with desktop resolution before entering the game, so I guess that's a bonus. Next on the list was Tomb Raider from 2013, and it's a perfect example of the type of game where this tech really shows. The game only shipped with FXAA or SMAA, and FXAA was notoriously blurry, and SMAA notoriously taxing with mediocre image results. With DLDSR, you can either choose to stack the extra resolution on top of SMAA four times if you have a really powerful GPU, or you can turn off the in-game AA and simply raise your resolution with the 2.25 times DLDSR option, and you will get an incredibly crisp image with minimal aliasing thanks to the smoothness pass that comes with DLDSR that you can tweak to make extra smooth or extra sharp. Talking about this smoothness slider, it goes from super smooth at 100% all the way to zero smoothness at, well, 0%, and it seems to scale differently than it did before with normal DSR. All of my testing was done with 50% smoothness, and it seems to be a solid place to start if you want just a general guideline. Next on the list was Bioshock Infinite, another great example since there are no direct controls over any particular graphics settings in the options, so you just get the presets and the game performance on modern hardware is pretty much as a walk in the park. You can definitely spot a sharper, more defined image as well as far less aliasing all around, and in my case I still managed to clear well above 200 FPS on average, so once again it's a really solid example of where DLDSR really shines. I then wanted to test an older game with Alan Wake, and it was very similar experience to what happened with Bioshock. But given that the overall asset quality in this game is not super high by today's standards, you don't really notice a massive improvement in the game's presentation from the higher resolution. This was another game where you had to enable the resolution outside the game in order to get it to work properly in game, which appears to be a pretty common trend with the LDSR, so maybe there's a space for a utility that automatically change your desktop resolution before entering the game since it's quite hit or miss when it works and when it doesn't but as you can see the image is well it's definitely better but I'm not really sure if it's worth all the trouble in this particular title. Now on to more recent games, and Control is a great example of a different way to use DLDSR, where it combines with DLSS to essentially have access to higher internal resolutions as if you were using, for example, a 4K monitor. In this case, even the performance version of DLSS at 4K with DLDSR beats the DLSS quality at 1440p. That shouldn't come in as a surprise since the DLSS performance at 4K renders the image at 1080p, whilst the quality mode at 1440p only renders it at around 960p. But just like you could with DSR prior to this DLDSR version, raising your output resolution gives you access to more DLSS resolutions, and so you're able to fine-tune your image and just dial in how much performance you're willing to lose in exchange for image quality. And at 2.25 times DLDSR, you get a pristine image that when you combine it with DLSS quality gives you an average of 60 FPS on an RTX 3090 and it's by far the best I've seen control look. Other games like Forza Horizon 5 for example are very recent, very demanding and have very limited AA options. You also in this case have another thing to consider and that's that the game scales 
equals the quality of its assets with the resolution. So the same exact settings will look different if you simply change your game resolution. With that said, it's pretty desirable then to just push for 4K even if you have a 1080p or a 1440p monitor, but have the performance to spare, which once again, it's exactly where the LDSR shines. And just like expected, the overall image quality was excellent. And on my testing, I only lost around 20 FPS coming from 1440p with 4 times MSAA to 2.25 times DLDSR, which basically is 4K with only 2 times MSAA. At 1440p, 4 times MSAA was the minimum I wanted to go to in order to have minimal shimmering, but 2 times MSAA at 4K with DLDSR is a much cleaner, much less aliased, a much sharper image all around. One important note with games like Forza that can't be run in exclusive full screen mode, you have to once again change your desktop resolution to get the full effect of DLDSR. I tested changing it only in game versus changing it in the desktop and even though the performance stayed basically the same changing it in the desktop resulted in a noticeably clear image that when combined with a little bit of MSAA resulted in the best presentation I've ever seen on this game. Keep in mind that DLDSR is only really usable if you're trying to super sample your game. Don't think that for example if you have a 4k monitor you should try to find a way to enable this feature at 4k resolution. And also keep in mind that DLDSR DSR is not as impressive as DLSS given that it will lower your FPS compared to native resolution. The deep learning part in DLDSR is basically only related to the way it downscales the image and that's where you gain the performance that Nvidia talks about. They say that 2.25 times DLDSR is equal in quality to 4 times DSR and that's mostly what I find and the performance is of course much better because you're effectively rendered at a much lower resolution. With all that said, I'll leave some links in the description to some Reddit posts that I read that helped me figure out certain things and maybe you're curious too even after watching the video and I'll make sure that the first link in the description is to the Digital Foundry video that's definitely coming in the near future and that will be much better than everything that I said because who am I kidding? I'm just a guy that makes tech videos about all sorts of stuff and this week I got interested in this particular feature but we all know who the real pros are when it comes to dissecting graphical settings and uh, I'm just a guy that shows my cat at the end of his videos. Oh, 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 oh uh, but, but you're here, but it's absolutely nothing to do with NVIDIA, DLDSR, DSR, DLSS, any of those acronyms, you're just here for some feline action and I'll surely and very gladly share it with you. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed and you stick around and um, yeah, bye!